Don't get me wrong, computers are amazing. And I'm not gonna stop using computers just because they're pretty easy to hack into. What if I told you there was a technique for securing data that dates back to the 1800s and it remains uncrackable to this day? This is the one time pad. I want you to imagine you're a spy on the ground in a foreign country. Your job is to gather intelligence and report back to headquarters. And headquarters have to give you jobs when you're in the field, but they're not just gonna text you or send you a WhatsApp message because we don't know who's listening to those systems. There could be bugs all over the place. But what I'm about to show you here, if you do it properly, is absolutely crack proof. And the concept behind the one-time pad dates back to 1882. It was originally designed by a guy called Frank Miller. He was a banker. And he made this code book that would help secure banking transactions way ahead of its time. But in 1917, a guy called Vernon took it to the next level. And that is what we're gonna look at right now. You get this tiny little piece of paper. Can you see it? Okay, you can't see that. So here we go, here it is. This is just a blown up version of one of these. A little bit easier. This is your key, far too big to be used in reality. But this is what you're gonna use to encrypt your message. So we need a message. Here are a few prepared messages. This little crib sheet comes from Dirk's paper on how to secure communications using the one-time pad. I'll put a link to this in the description. So thank you, Dirk, for making this. If you wanted to say train tomorrow, you would use these numbers and that's what we're gonna do now. So here's a message I've prepared earlier. 604 photograph, 064 airplane, 8.20 tomorrow, 5.69 night. Photograph airplane tomorrow night, nice. And it's also much shorter than writing out the words photograph airplane tomorrow night, which has this many letters in it. So that's the big benefit of using a pre-planned sheet of paper like this. You can take a 10 letter word and make it a three number word. So now that we have this, what do we do? We won't use the first five digits, and I'll show you why later. We'll start with the second group. You write those underneath these numbers. Six, five, five, three, nine. Next group, one, one, six, one, nine, seven, Two. Here's where it gets a little bit complex. You gotta do this modulo addition and subtraction. On the encryption side, we gotta do modulo subtraction. And when you receive the message on the other end, we have to do modulo addition. What that means is, practically, for you, if the number on the bottom is bigger than the number on the top, this example of five and zero, what you do is you imagine a one before the zero, so it's actually 10. 10 minus five is five, okay? So here we go. Six minus six is fine, zero. 10 minus five is five. 14 minus five is nine. 10 minus three is seven. 16 minus nine is seven. Four minus one, three. Eight minus one, seven. 12 minus six is six. 10 minus one is nine. 15 minus nine is six. 16 minus seven is nine. And nine minus two is seven. There it is. You started off with your actual message, your plain text. 
then you subtracted the key and that leaves you with the encrypted numbers. Those numbers you can send to your recipient any way you want. You could text them, you could put those in a WhatsApp, you could put those in a FaceTime call, you could send them via Morse code over the radio, you could take an advert in the New York Times on a specific day where the recipient knows to look in the New York Times and you could have those numbers provided they have this on their end they will be able to do the math to work out what that means and we can do that now it's the reverse process so we'll take the encrypted message then we'll add the key and then we'll end up with the plain text numbers so the key is so those are the numbers from the key and now you're going to do addition so six plus zero is six five plus five is ten but forget the one like before five plus five is ten nine plus five is fourteen the four is the bit that we're interested in you start to see now look comes together Seven plus three is ten. We're interested in zero. Six, four, eight, two. There we go. So now we have the numbers. We wrote the plain text message. We put the key in there. We ended up with the encrypted message. We sent it somehow out into the world. The person on the other end received it. They whip their key out and decrypt it. They now have the numbers. And obviously the numbers are meaningless <laughs> unless they also have this, which they should have. So that's it. Once you encrypt your message using the key, you destroy the key. That's why it's called a one-time pad. It's used once. You destroy it and it's gone. If you make it small enough, you could eat it. You could burn it. You could put it in a really good shredder. Either way, you have to destroy it because if someone gets a hold of it, they can decrypt what you just sent. And what you just sent is probably pretty sensitive. I'm going to keep using this one because it's bigger and you can see it, but in reality, you wouldn't do that. But what if we want to say more than just what's on here? Well, we could use this, another crib sheet. As you can see, A-E-I-O-T, that's one, two, three, four, five. Everything on this row starts with a six. Everything on this row starts with a seven, eight, nine. Bottom right, you have a space, which is nine, nine, some punctuation and figures and letters for 98. So if you want to switch between letters and numbers, because you'll notice there's actually no numbers on here. You just use the number, but you write 98 before it. Let's write a new message. Okay, this time I'll show you why we skipped those first five numbers. The first five digits are to identify which pad to use and they're written first. So seven, five, three, five, seven. That's it. We won't encrypt this at all. This will be sent in plain text essentially to the recipient. So when they get the numbers on the other end, they know which one of their little sheets that they need to use to decrypt the message. So here's what we want to say. P is 80. L, 76. E, 2. A, 1. S, 84. Back to E to S, 84, U, 86, B, 61, S, 84, C, 62, R, 82, I, 3, B, 61, E, 2. It says, Please subscribe. 
So we're going to take this and we're going to add the key. We've already got the key identifier. And now we're going to do the numbers again. Then we do the math again. That's it. Please subscribe. So now we send those numbers, this bottom group, and this bottom group, and the key first. One, two, three, just like that. Any method we want, Morse code, an Instagram picture with the numbers in it, doesn't really matter. They get it at the other end, do the decryption, use their sheet, and then hopefully they'll subscribe. And this is truly uncrackable. The only way to break this message is to get this key. That's it. So once you encrypt, you get rid of your key. And once the person on the other end decrypts, they get rid of their key, you're home free. So if it's so amazing, why don't we just do this all the time? <laughs> well, <laughs> very, very hard to do all the time. What if you just want to tell your partner to pick up some milk from the shop on their way home from work? Doesn't really work. But it is a really good way of encrypting information. And think of it like this. Digital is fast and easy and everyone can just whip out their phone and send a message and you blindly trust the encryption. With this, you don't really have to trust the encryption. So the difficulties of this system are the production of these little pieces of paper and they have to be truly random. If the numbers aren't truly random, the encryption will fail. Someone somewhere will be able to capture that message in transmission and store it in a computer system and analyze it over time and figure out a weakness. If these are not random, then there's repetition. And where there's repetition, there's weakness. These numbers probably aren't random. I made these numbers in Excel because normally it works like this. You remember when you're a kid and you got A, B, C and you turn that into one, two, three. Easy, yeah. Or maybe you take A, B, C and turn it into D, E, F. When you zoom out over a whole message, you'll find those words like the and 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 I and am and as, and they'll stand out a mile. And very slowly, you'll start to puzzle it together how the code works. With this, you can't do it. It is uncrackable. If someone from the NSA is watching, take those numbers there, the encrypted numbers, put them into your big fancy computer, try and crack it. I'll see you in never because it's impossible to crack. As were things like iMessage, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, FaceTime, Skype, Zoom, Teams. They all go through various fluxes of being secure and insecure. This, uncrackable. Unless, of course, you don't follow the rules. Truly random numbers to make these, and you only use them once. That is the one-time pad. That's why it's so good. Have a play, download Dirk's PDF, and have fun. See you next time.